Some parts of the Chernobyl reactor has enough radiation that it can be lethal dose in minutes. Near the core of the Chernobyl reactor, the radiation level are so high that it's dangerous to go near it even with the safety equipments. One such example is this image which consumed the life of a worker who took this image even with the safety equipments. These radiations are ionizing radiation which has enough energy to knock off electron from an atom and ionize them as their name suggests. These radiations are also released when unstable radioactive nuclei like uranium and thorium decays. The radiation like gamma rays can even damage DNA molecule. Common types of radiations are alpha, beta and gamma. These are not visible to the naked eye. To see these particles we need particle detector like cloud chamber. This is a cloud chamber which you can use to visualize the path taken by the particle. The trails you see are the path of the particles emitted by the radioactive material. The straight trails are from the alpha particles and the unstable curly trails are from the beta particles. The cloud chamber uses a simple phenomenon but in a brilliant way to detect these particles. The trails are actually the vapors of alcohol being condensed. Just like water vapors condensing around wings of plane. Anyways, in cloud chamber, the condensation is not from pressure changes but from temperature and nucleation. The cloud chamber consists of a sealed glass container and a platform on the bottom which is cooled to help the condensation and a platform on the top to provide heat. The chamber is filled with saturated isopropyl alcohol vapors and the radioactive material is placed inside the chamber. The radiation from the material strikes the saturated alcohol vapors and this creates a partial charge on the vapor molecule. These molecules act as a nucleation site for condensation of vapor. Nucleation site is a place where condensation of vapor or solidification of liquid starts. When a liquid turns into solid, the nucleation starts from the impurities in the liquid. As impurities are usually bigger than liquid molecules and molecules stops and sticks to the impurities at right temperature and the liquid solidifies. And a special thing happens if the liquid is 100% pure. Due to lack of impurities, the liquid doesn't solidify even below freezing point. At this stage, it's sensitive to even slightest disturbance. If you had a bottle of pure water below 0 degree Celsius, if you slam it against something, the water would instantly freeze. In the same way, in case of saturated vapors below its boiling point, the vapor wants to condense but it can't condense without a nucleation site. That's where the ionizing radiations comes in. As it moves through the vapor, bumping into the particles and creating a charged molecule which attracts other molecules and this causes temporary condensation in the path took by the particle. Just a side note, even in cloud seeding, hydrophilic powder sprayed on clouds to cause nucleation and drain. Anyways, back to the topic. As each particle leaves some specific pattern in the cloud chamber, this pattern can be used to identify the particle. To make it even more interesting, if a magnetic field is applied to the chamber due to Lorentz force, each particle has a specific radius of curvature and a direction of curvature. Because of this setup, the discovery of positron was possible. As two particle physicists observed that a particle is curving in the direction of alpha particle, but the radius of curvature is like beta particle. This confirmed that this particle has mass near, near to electron but opposite charge and similarly muons were discovered. Muons are just electrons but on steroids that is it has more mass than electron. Later these particles are considered as antimatter. Like this the cloud chamber has played an important role in the history of particle physics. There are many ways to detect these particles but cloud chamber is one of my favorite because how it uses a simple phenomenon and yet having a big impact on the world of particle physics.